Hello, Stephen White, Steve Arts 89. I'm going to look at the whole of the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance uh, series. Um, it's 10 episodes. Now, I, I'm i a fan of the uh, movie and I've been anticipating this and I'd planned to watch it as a whole binge session. Um, but unfortunately, it dropped in Australia at about, I think, 5 or 6 in the evening. I was expecting it to drop in the AM. Um, because I didn't have the uh, um, time differences right. So I couldn't watch it all that night. I watched the first four episodes, I think, uh, and then I had to go out because um, I had a friend out of town. And when I came home, I watched another three episodes. So I got up to seven. And then I had to go out again the next day. And it wasn't until I got home after that that I watched the last three episodes. So I didn't watch it as one. And that might have helped a little bit because I got a little bit of space and I got to sort of look at it because um, it's not the kind of show that I would normally binge because it's the kind of show you want to look at every frame the production design the 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 the, the world that they create you want to you don't want to miss any of it you want to see every creature every little detail um, and it just it does envelop you. It does totally um, suck you into its world, and I like I was sitting in front of my TV with chocolate and um, the lights dimmed and just focusing on every frame. And I and I don't do that for TV shows anymore. I don't know who does that for TV shows anymore, but I, I had to do it for this. I think I could have binged all ten if I'd really tried, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. Um, so. What can I say? I've got a lot of notes. Um, well, it's a modern fairy tale. It's immersive. Um, it's got adult themes. Um, but a lot of that's going to go above the children's heads. It's got some messages about power. <sighs> There's a lot of stuff. Um, I'm just not sure where to go. Um, I think I'll stick to the production. Um, because you can get lost in the mythology and the themes and all that, and yeah, the production itself, uh, it's mostly traditional puppetry, which everyone wanted, and people were afraid it was going to be all CGI, that they're going to rely too much on the CGI, and they do rely a lot on the CGI, but it's to add to, enhance, 90% of the time, there's only a few instances, I'll get the bitching out of the way, a couple of little complaints, um, the wide shots are gorgeous, except for when they have creatures or vehicles, like the, the Skeksis, um, um, what do you call it, chariot? Not chariot, um, the words just gone out of my head. Their vehicle. Um, when it's travelling towards the castle, it looks so fake. It looks, you can see all the separate wheels and things just moving like little cogs, and it just doesn't look at all real, it, it just looks CGI, and I, and it's kind of shocking because everything else is so seamless and flawless, but that, and, and the carriage, it's, it's a carriage. The other thing is the carriage as well. Um, the window door things, um, that they just have sort of orifices that open, um, and the Skeksis sort of stick out and pop out and that, and they're like an organic element that opens and closes, and it looks totally fake. It looks it looks like early 90s like CGI. I don't know why it and the, the action scenes with the carriage also just look really fake. They're too sharp and precise that they just look like separate elements moving around each other the whole time whereas everything else everything else looks organic and real and gives a reality and a feeling um, that you're really there and you can really believe in it except for those scenes. Now the, the the distance scenes you can sort of forget because the land striders, which also look fake, and the vehicles look fake, but they're just sort of little in the in the, ba in the sort of background sort of thing. It's sort of the same as having a practical um, set and then having like a little matchbox toy sort of roll roll along to it sort of thing. You just, just sort of kind of you can kind of forgive it. But um, I think with the action scene with the with the carriage. If they couldn't pull it off, if they didn't actually build the real thing and couldn't actually film it, they should have just not done that scene. You, you don't. There's no point reaching further than you know than you actually can, and and um, 
So that just everything with the carriage was just wrong. Um, now I think about it, it's really just so uh, maybe one person was in charge of that, one team was in charge of that, and they just dropped the ball. But everything else in the show is beautiful and flawless, and you can't tell most of the time where the puppetry starts and the CGI, um, where the puppetry ends and the CGI starts. It looks about 90 10 basically. So that's the best thing because there's nothing like it on TV. None of the other shows, none of the other movies have the feel of that. Because um, everything now is so CGI and superheroes and it's all, it, it just all looks the same and nothing looks like this. Even like Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones, which are sort of like the adult, more boring adult versions. Um, don't look the same. So it is amazing and beautiful and brilliant in its own way. And that's because they took the vision of, um, <laughs> Jesus, did I just forget his name? Jim Henson. Jim Henson took his vision and they've just expanded it. Just filled it out, patted it out, showed what we've seen before and just, they're just adding more and showing parts we didn't see. Um, events that had already happened. And they've managed to get back into that perfectly. And um, if you're a fan, it's just like, you know, going from one to the other. It's great. Un unlike some other things which <laughs> compare Star Trek to <laughs> Star Trek Discovery, for example. Um, God, if they'd given it the Discovery treatment, how horrific would that have been? Um, but no, it gets the Cobra Kai treatment and it, look it just feels like you were just going to Thra and you just, you know, were there before the film. Um, so I love that. It's great. The cinematography is just stunning. Um, the effects, the design, I'm just looking through my notes. What have I forgotten? Nothing. Um, yep, just the whole production is just a work of art. And the world building, um, now my understanding is there had been a lot of world building done in the comics. And there is an actual a fair amount of um, sort of non canon, prequely, sequely. Um, stuff and material and work that has been done um, from the Dark Crystal, which I didn't realise. I found out uh, there are three three-part um, comic series. There's a prequel and two sequels. And the first sequel was supposed to actually be the movie, which was in pre-production for a long time and just didn't happen. Um, but there's also some um, junior novels and uh, another couple of comics and some books I didn't know about and um, so a lot of it was established now I don't know how much was established because when the series starts off the first episode it does seem a little bit Game of Thrones and it's all the different clans and all this and I might I think that was in I hope that was in the originals because if not it's just a bit too Game of Thrones but um, they don't get into it in that it's not like separate clans fighting it's not like Game of Thrones basically um, by the end of the series, all the clans have come together, and um, it's really just race against race. There's, there's, they're all the same. So, because um, if you don't know, and spoilers, um, the Skeksis are aliens who came to the planet a thousand years before, and um, they were split in two separate beings. And when they were trying to get back, um, Olga was trying to help, and that's how she lost her eye and um, how they end up being split because they'll try and just read creation myths. I'm not going to spoil it all for you. But um, basically the planet and the aliens were, and the, and the crystal of truth were in harmony. The Skeksis came, they started draining the crystal, they, they took possession of it, um, and they started draining it for, for, to, to be immortal. Whether they're being, they were beings that were immortal before that, I'm not sure. I think they made themselves immortal. Um, and they basically have caused an imbalance and it's called the darkening and um, it's pretty much what the whole series is about but um, you spend most of your time with the girlflings and, and, you're, and you're, you're aware that they are going to die um, they're not going to win the war and I wasn't sure how far the series would go would it just show up to a certain point, or would it actually go all the way through to them being destroyed? And when they started to get p possessed, um, and it looked like they were going to be um, um, drained on mass, um, I thought, 
oh, this is going to end. It's not going to be like a limited series. It's going to end where um, the movie started. But um, towards the end, it slowed down, and um, we just have a bit of a skirmish between the um, Skeksis and the Gelflings, and the Skeksis basically retreat um, and then build... Um, I guess they, they go off to build their army, and eventually they will build an army that um, defeats the Gelflings, because all their clans have combined, but it's still not going to be enough. So the next season, at least there'll be at least two seasons. I mean, Netflix is famous for doing three seasons now um, and cancelling stuff after three seasons. And this is obviously a very expensive show. It has to do really well or there's no way they'll make a lot of it. Um, so I guess I should look at the story a bit. Um, basically, we have Rain, Rain who uh, is the son of a general, he is um, seeing a girl and she's the first girlfling who is drained because the Skeksis, the, the crystal stops giving them energy because they've drained it too much, um, it's turned dark and they um, <laughs> find ways to, to drain the essence out of the girl girlflings. So they kill, um, I forgot her name, well, um, doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> um, and um, they set him up. He becomes um, a, a, a um, fugitive. Um, but eventually he's able to convince the other girlflings um, that he is innocent and that the Skeksis are evil and that they're draining the essence out of girlflings um, and causing the darkening, which is going to destroy everything, I guess, in theory. Um, now, the Queen... The royalty is a bit slow to get on the band, get on the um, the mission. Um, my words are failing me at the moment, um, and we have a kind of what's the queen from? Um, we have an evil queen basically. Um, she's so jealous and bitter that she's not. This is the princess. She's she's. Jealous and bitter that the queen doesn't treat her well enough. So she basically takes the Skeksis side against her mother. They kill her mother. She blames her mother and um, basically becomes like a Skeksis princess. And she um, just blames the Gelflings for everything and um, acts... Because the only thing in the story that doesn't make sense to me is why the Gelflings went along with the Skeksis basically pretending to be gods and taking control of everything. Um, I mean, I know we live in an age of Trump and that, but I mean, I, I can imagine humans being that stupid, but I had trouble believing the Gelflings were that stupid. Um, to just follow someone blindly and believe all their lies and justify them and then... Um, it's kind of disturbing to see a puppet do this. Um, I mean, we're used to seeing a Muppet on TV in America anyway, but um, nothing to do with this planet. Um, <laughs> but eventually, of course, they turn on her and she joins the other girlflings. Um, I mean, after many family members die. And they eventually um, get the other clans to join in. There's a nice little um, side trip where they go to the Crystal Desert, or Glass Desert, um, and they meet a Skeksy who has um, turned on the Skeksis, who basically tells them a basic origin story and explains how they're uh, split, cre uh, split creatures and they have to get back together. Um, but that's what their, their goal is to, to be reunited and or leave the planet, which was their original intention, um, to go back to where they came. They were kicked out of their world um, before they came to this planet. So why? Not really explained. But um, I'm not sure if the ending worked. That's the only other thing. Um, Production-wise, the effects um, just on the carriage were bad. Everything else was great. Story-wise, um, I was up... I was with them right up until Augra, who um, we all... everyone has to remember from the, the film. If you haven't seen the film or the series, this isn't going to make much sense to you. Um, 
works. It's just, I can't make the video long enough to explain it all. Um, she basically is drained and disappears. And I'm like, um, hell no. How are they, are they going to differ from the story now? Are we going to have an alternate timeline? Is this, you know, are they Star Trekking this? Are they discovering this? We're now, they're just going to make up whatever they want. And I started to freak out a bit. And I'm like, uh, I think this was episode nine. Um, but basically she's drained to save, um, one of the Skeksis who was hurt. Um, and of course his, um, counterpart is hurt as well. And he eventually, um, he's the archer, um, cause they're joined the, um, the archer and the hunter. Um, the archer sacrifices himself. And when they both die, Augra basically pops out of thin air. Um, <laughs> so her, whatever, her, she, her essence was drained and then her essence is just put back into the universe. And I thought that was a bit lame because I thought, okay, they can't just make it disappear and then make it pop up again. Um, it's not end game, um, <laughs> but they did exactly that. So I thought that was a bit weak. And the other thing I thought was a bit weak was that there weren't a lot of girlflings. I'm like, there should be Lord of Rings, like, like whole armies of like girlflings or at least a few hundred. And we just got like 10 or 20, um, standing off against like the, the, I think it was 10 Skeksis. Um, and there's sorcery involved in the victory. Basically, um, Deet got um, her power, basically got the power from the, um, oh my damn, what is the tree called? <laughs> the sanctuary tree. The sanctuary tree, which is the one who gave her the vision and, and told her um, that the darkening was happening and the skeck season started it all. Um, when she goes to them, um, it's being destroyed. It gives her the power and said you cannot destroy the darkling the power but you it can be changed the the energy can change and blah 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 so she the um the skeksis have harnessed some of the darkling's energy they put it in a um, crystal in a staff they use it to attack um the girlflings she absorbs it and throws it back at them they win they retreat but she's been infected um, with the darkening and she basically leaves because she has seen a vision um, earlier, one of the other episodes, where she could possibly um, turn and be um, one of the, basically ruling one of the Skeksis or a queen. Or it's a couple of shots. She's on the throne in the, the Crystal Castle. Um, so... We don't know where it's going to go for season two. Um, obviously, um, they're, they're going to have their army that they've created. The girlflings are all going to come together in mass. Um, but whether things will go along the lines and meet up with the film exactly, some people are questioning because they killed um, the general, one of the, Skex one of the Skeksis who was in the film. So whether they bring him back like they did Augra, um, kind of just how could they feel like it, or whether they're deviating. I hope they're not deviating because they've done everything else right. They've got the tone, the look, everything is right. I just want them to stick to the story so you can watch the series and then watch the movie, not have them be two, diff two different alternate realities or um, storylines or anything. I'm really hoping because, I mean, they should, I guess they can bring back one. Um, but I, I was, I was like, why even, unless they've got a really great way or reason to bring him back, why even go there? Just, you don't have to kill any of the characters who are in the movie. It's, a f <laughs> it's pretty simple. Just don't kill anyone who's in the movie. That's all you have to not do. So I'm a bit worried about that because I don't want it to deviate. I don't want, now Augur did say that she saw many possibilities, but we've only seen one in the film and that's the one I want this to be all a part of. I don't want different realities. Uh, in this one, the girlflings live, blah, 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 although if it goes along with the movies and we just watch the girlflings die and then we just see the, like, sort of the birth of these two, or the saving of these, rescuing of these two, um, girlflings who are, we know are gonna be the, the hope and, and, and save everything and, and rule the planet and get everything back to how it should be, that's nice, but it will be kind of depressing to see everyone die. So maybe if they did do an alternate version, it would be more enjoyable as a series. Maybe that's what they're thinking. I don't know. But I'm just going to leave it there because I'm up to 20 minutes. And I just really wanted to say I love the series. 90% puppetry, brilliant CGI mix, almost flawless. One element doesn't work, the carriage. I don't know what went wrong there. And the story, it was a little weak, the final battle. I was expecting... I, I almost felt like they could have 
in a couple of episodes that they'd really tried, they could have ended the series as an event series with the Gelflings all being destroyed in like one or two episodes. I kind of feel like maybe they were sort of planning it both ways and then um, at some point they just sort of expanded those last couple of episodes out to set up um, the, 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 next, the next chapter um, so they could go either way. I guess they, I felt a little bit of that, but maybe I'm just looking too hard. I need to watch them again. Um, I should have watched them again before I did this, but I just wanted to um, say how I felt and just get an initial reaction to the whole series, um, not just the first episode. And then I'll, maybe I'll have a second view and do a review of the review. But um, I loved it. It's great. Watch it. If you haven't seen the series, if you haven't seen the movie, watch it. Um, <laughs> if you have, you haven't, doesn't matter. If you're going to enjoy the series, you can always watch it after. And if you have, it blends perfectly so far. And anything, a couple of slight things that are off, can easily be you know sorted out in the next season so I don't think there's really anything to worry about I'm just extra protective because I love the dark crystal and a lot of things that have been brought back haven't been treated so well and this is one of the few that has and I just wanted to stay in that way so I'm just gonna leave it there um, thanks for watching um, please feel free to like subscribe comment tell me what you think um, I'm looking at everyone's reviews uh, reading all the comments it's fascinating I'm surprised how many people don't know the movie and are trying to understand the series it's kind of funny but um it's complicated even when you do. So um, good luck. Have fun.